Solomon Wilcox, longtime uh, NFL player, NFL analyst. Solomon, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Guys, I'm doing great, uh, and thanks for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, and I know uh, part of the reason you're here today is to talk about a really cool product that Ke- Keith, our producer, was telling me about this. I love this. It's called, I hope I pronounce it right, Aditext. Correct? Did I get it right? That is true. You got it right. Uh, and, you know, it's about um, scoring your immunity, knowing your your immune health, and that's what Aditex does. They score uh, your immunity. And th- if I could real tell you a quick story, you know, back in March, I received the J&J vaccination. Right. And for nearly two months, I was walking around thinking I was protected against COVID-19. Well, the people at Aditex, they asked me to submit a small uh, sample of blood. They just pricked my finger um, um, so that I could be tested to see if I had developed enough neutralizing antibodies to protect me from COVID-19. Well, the results show that my score was very low, uh, and it revealed that I wasn't protected at all. So then in July, I received the second vaccination. This time it was the first dosage of the Pfizer vaccine. Ten days later, I submitted another blood sample to Aditex, and it revealed that the, my production of neutralizing antibodies increased drastically. So as a result, you know, I now feel that I'm certain and I'm comfortable because I'm protected against the COVID-19 virus. And so we, we really need to understand that it's not about vaccination or unvaccination. We need to know what our immune health is to make sure that we have a robust immunity. And in that way, we can be assured that we are protected. Yeah, that'd be that. That's good to know. It's it's an additional level of peace of mind. Good stuff there. Sounds like a really good product. Uh, yeah, and and if people yeah. want to know where they can go, all they have to do to know your score is go to adatexscore dot com. www dot adatex a d i t x t s c o r e adatexscore dot com. There you go, Solomon. Um, I want to talk to you about Baker Mayfield. Baker obviously had a really terrible game this past week. The Browns won because they played great defense. They ran the ball well. Baker was was missing throws all over the field. This week he got – actually just today it got reported that he has a partially torn labrum in his non-throwing shoulder. And you know, the conversation's been all week. How, you know, it, this, it, it was Did he just play badly because he's got the injury? Is there more to it that – you know, Alex Van Pelt, who obviously played in the league, said, hey, listen – it's painful, but you got to play through it. You know, this is this is not the reason he played poorly. What what do we believe here, Solomon? Is is that why he played poorly? Is it part of the reason he played poorly, or do you think it's not a factor at all? Here, I, I think it's a factor. First of all, it's a factor because Baker was really good the first two weeks of the season, and I and when I saw these numbers drop from seventy six percent completion percentage during the first two games. 53 percent in the last year that's a that's more than 25 percent um in terms of drop from his completion percentage he he's much better than that guys i mean let's he's much better than that. now i i said something was wrong i said either he's injured not telling us or maybe it was just an anomaly he's overly hyper um and you know over overthrew a few balls but no he's we've never seen him at this percentage, he's never, I mean, even in college, he's never been a 53% guy. He's always been 60, 70% yeah. guy. I mean, high complete, he's an accurate thrower. So, no, I, when, when I heard the injury, I said, it, that explains it. Now, Alex Van Pelt's, um, you know, perspective on his side of it, he can play with it because it's a non throwing shoulder. But when people understand what it takes to throw a ball, it takes, your whole body, that whole mechanics. And I think the injury can throw the mechanics off. I think it's yeah. something that he'll get used to, even though the pain is going to be there. I think he can get used to it, and I think he'll be better. But let's give him credit for playing through this and the fact that they're 3-1 and one after yeah. their first four games despite this. Uh, yeah. I think it's, a, it's still a good sign. The Browns, unlike most teams, have a very quality backup. Case Keenum's been a starter in the league. He's won games. He's won playoff games. We know that if he's healthy and Baker's healthy, that Baker's definitely the better player. But Baker's not healthy. At what point do you think about resting Baker and starting Keenum because he's probably good enough to get by with at least for a few weeks? At least I think he is. What do you, what do you think, Solomon? Unlike other positions, the quarterback 
position is not a position where it's interchangeable. It's just not. Sure. Yeah. It's just not. It's not like, oh, let's rotate the back like we do Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The quarterback position is not that way. It's a different leader in the huddle. It's a different voice in the huddle. It's a different energy, okay, based on who's that quarter. That, it's a different energy for those other ten guys. And that's what you got to keep in mind. Case Keenum is not Baker Mayfield. If there is a drop-off. I could just like, now you might get a few plays where it looked the same, but no, over the body of work speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. And therefore, Case Keenum would have been a first overall pick or at least a first round pick, and he wasn't. No, there, there, there is no way you're going to do this based on ah, this is a rotate guy. Now, the Baker can't go, then you're going to do your best with with Case Keenum, and uh, you know, coaches give us all that next man up stuff. But right. if the next guy up was as good as the guy that is the first up, then why doesn't the pay scale reflect that? Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. Because it's, it's not true. Because it's just not true. Right. It's a, right. it's, a it's, it's, it's coded language to get players to still buy in regardless of who's in there. Yeah. But we all know that if Miles Garrett is out, the next guy coming in is not as good as Miles Garrett. Uh, fair not. enough. No, fair enough. Speaking of Miles, <laughs> speaking of Miles Garrett Solomon, uh, you know he's had two, the last two weeks. He has just killed it, and the whole defense has killed it. They they destroyed the Bears, nine sacks. Uh, and I, even more impressively, I thought was holding a Vikings team that with a very talented offense. And I I know Dalvin Cook was banged up, but that's an offense that had been playing really well with a lot of talent, and they held them to seven points, and they shut them out after their initial drive. Uh, are you are you a believer in this Browns defense and the the, the way it's played so far? All right, I love them. And, you know, I thought they'd be good. You know, for me, Miles Garrett is the best edge rusher in all of football. Now, the guy you're going to see this week in San Diego, he's pretty good too. Joey Bosa is good, but Miles Garrett I, is my front runner for defensive player of the year. Um, I think they've got you know some some guys on that defense that are going to win a lot of awards and. Jade OK, I think is capable of, you know, being, uh, you know, in, in in the mix for defensive uh, rookie of the year. He's that good, depending on how he's used and how many more plays he's going to make. Um, this, this defense has, I, I think, all the makings of a championship defense. The secondary is going to only continue to get better. I, I'm going to like what I'm, you know, the next time they play Kansas City, I think, you know, hey, listen, they almost beat them. But the next time they play them, I think they'll be a different team. I think they'll be that much more mature. I think they'll have come into themselves. Uh, I love the Cleveland Browns on the defense side of the ball. Love the offense, too, because there's a lot to like with that offensive line and two running backs in the backfield. But um, I I thought this would be a good defense, and I think they have the opportunity to be a great defense. Solomon Wilcott's with us. Solomon, uh, their opponent this week, obviously the Chargers, you referenced them. Uh, it's still weird to say L.A. Chargers. It should, should not be L.A. Chargers, but but it is. But uh, Justin Herbert obviously has been spectacular since coming to the league. Are you surprised? That, did you expect him to be this good when he first joined the league last year? Well, when he was at Oregon, the knock was, and I watched him a lot and in our PFF database, he did have some inaccurate throws. He did, did, I didn't want to say he was inaccurate. Because I thought he was accurate. I just thought at a critical moment he was not as accurate. Uh, third down and on big, at key moments in the game. And he didn't play big in the big games until his final game, and that was in the Rose Bowl, and he played great. But earlier in the season, you know, they had a game against Auburn. He just didn't look the part. And even in the previous years, he had just had the moments where I thought he was a little overwhelmed, looked like he had that deer in the headlights look. But I, I've always said that, particularly after he finished the Senior Bowl, and I thought he had really come into his own. I said this guy is going to turn a lot of heads because he looks good getting off the bus. I mean, if you if you were to draw a quarterback and just how they look and how they throw and how you stand tall in the pocket and when that arm is just when you're just slinging it with great accuracy. I mean, it's Justin Herbert, it's Josh Allen because they're very similar, right? Yeah. Uh, no, this guy's got everything, and he's smart, too. I, I like his demeanor. Um, he was an all-academic guy in Pac-12. I mean, he was just phenomenal. So 
no, the, the game's not too big for him. He's getting coached up. And you know, I'm a big fan of Brandon Staley. I, this game is being built as two great young quarterbacks, but also two great young coaches. Brandon no Staley, I think, is ahead of his time. In fact, he reminds you of a Tom Landry. The guy is a, well, he's a wow. former quarterback at the University of Dayton. He ran the defense for the Rams last year as number one. Hey, go talk to Johnny Johnson. Go talk to um, talk to uh, uh, Troy Hill. They'll tell you how smart this guy is. And now he's running. He can run the offense. He can run the defense. And not since Tom Landry have we had that kind of coach. Solomon, uh, what are your thoughts on on the uh, the rest of the AFC North? The Ravens kind of are like the Browns, where we expected them. The Bengals are a surprising three and one. The Steelers, to some, a surprising one and three. Which surprises you more, Bengals three and one or Steelers one and three? Well, we saw this coming. Steelers probably one and three because they have a good roster. The quarterback we we knew was aging. He's six months away from his fortieth birthday, and you know I you know kind of predicted that. Pittsburgh is the team that's in trouble. If you could play the long game, you say, look, Cleveland, uh, Baltimore, and Cincinnati, they all have ascending quarterbacks, young quarterbacks who are getting better. And why Ben has been the class of the division for years, he's the older, elder statesman, aging. He's ready to term out. And Pittsburgh can't tell you who his successor is going to be. So that tells you that the record was going to be exactly what they are now. That this is where the division is, was headed. It was going to be Cleveland, Baltimore, and Cincinnati. I don't know in what order, but I can tell you right now, Joe Burrow is the truth. This guy is that guy now. He's got a steely eye intensity about him that kind of reminds you of a Tom Brady. Um, I'm t- the guy is a competitor. And you saw what he did second half, scored on all four possessions. I saw him throw three interceptions consecutively against the Bears on three straight possessions, come back the next two possessions, throw two touchdowns. I mean, he he refuses to flinch. He refuses to be beat. And I just think the competitors that Baker Mayfield and Lamar uh, Jackson is and now Joe Burrow, it, it's going to be a fun division uh, with those three young quarterbacks all just continuing to get better. And, uh, you know, I think Andrew Barry <laughs> – I think for a general manager, I think he's doing a great job in terms of how he builds a team and constructs a team. So right now, Cleveland is the front runner, and I think it will remain that way. Solomon, if folks want to more information about Adatex, where do they go again? Go to AdatexScore.com. You should know that Adatex is partnering with Fear DX. That's the laboratory to offer Adatex score for COVID-19 um, in their labs. It's in the tri-state areas in Ohio, Indiana. Kentucky, and in Cleveland as well. To know the laboratory near you where you can have your immunity score um, and, and know uh, more about your immune health, go to www.adatechscore.com. Thanks, Solomon. We appreciate it, man. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Take care. You too, you too Solomon Wilcox. Keeping up with the flood of news every single day can be quite stressful. There is climate change happening. There's the pandemic, labor movements, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. Hi, I am Gideon Resnick, host of Crooked Media's What A Day. Each week, Travel Anderson, Priyanka Arabindi, Josie Duffy, Rice, and I are going to break down the biggest news stories of the day in a way that hopefully doesn't always make you want to cry. New episodes of What A Day drop every weekday at 5 a.m. Eastern. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The new sound of mealtime. The farmer's dog is real food, made fresh and delivered right to your door. No extreme processing, no preservatives, just fresh meat and fresh veggies you can see and hear right in the bowl. Make that processed kibble crunch a thing of the past and switch to a fresh diet from the farmer's dog. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash healthy to save 50% on your first box with free shipping. That's thefarmersdog.com slash healthy to save 50% with free shipping. Thefarmersdog.com slash healthy.